Hi, this is Professor Favors with Compound Sentences, and we're focusing on comma splices and run-ons. And when we have comma splices uh, and run-ons within a sentence, we are looking to correct that sentence. In previous lectures, it was a way when we used the fanboy or semicolon by itself conjunctive adverb, it was a way to combine the sentences and showing you uh, the methods for how to do that, method one, two, and three. But when we are confronted with a comma splice and run on, it is time to now correct the sentence. So this is the lecture on compound sentences using comma splices and run ons. It is a review of the previous methods for compound sentences, including method number one, fanboys, method number two, semicolon by itself, and method number three, semicolon plus conjunctive advert plus comma. This lecture also reviews the five simple sentence patterns because once you can understand what a simple sentence is, um, then you will be able to recognize a compound sentence and then further recognize how you need to correct it. So these lectures correspond to the practices, assignments, and quizzes, um, and they are taken directly from the course text. So review of five simple sentence patterns, you can find this discussion on pages 29 to 36, and then also on 41 to 45. So the simple sentence is defined as a sentence that houses a subject and a verb that makes sense without any additional phrases or words. The simple sentence is called an independent clause. So we're going to get into more independent and dependent clauses, um, I think, for the next week. So Tom threw the ball, John ran. Again, we don't always know why they threw it or why he ran, but we do understand that it is a sentence. It is a simple sentence, and it is a complete sentence in terms of uh, a subject and a verb, and it um, making sense. However, it is not always a complete thought because we don't know why Tom threw the ball, and we don't know why John ran. So these two sentences are considered independent clauses and make sense apart from adding other words. Subject of the sentence is the who or what that performs the action. Then the verb of the sentence is uh, a word that shows action or links the subject to verb to other words that describe or identify it. Okay, so then a phrase, a group of words without a subject and a verb. Then clause, a group of words with a subject and a verb. So uh, the dog is sleeping. That's a very simple sentence, and it's also an independent clause. However, after the class ends, if you read that aloud to yourself and stop, you will hear that is it that it is actually. Um, a dependent clause. So then it functions also like a fragment. Um, when you understand a simple sentence as functioning as an independent clause, it is easier to detect what might be a fragment or a dependent clause. So always remember that the dependent clause works like a baby. The independent clause works like the mother. So the mother does not need the baby to function as a full adult. However, the baby does need the mother in order to function to receive food, to, to receive changing, um, and just to be uh, mothered or receive caregiving. So sentence patterns, remember there are five simple sentence uh, patterns, subject verb, compound subject verb, subject compound verb, compound subject compound verb, and then verb subject verb compound subject. So remember when you are trying to determine what is the subject of a sentence when you have it in the reverse verb subject, just look for the subject of, look for honestly the verb of the sentence, and then you'll know how that is conjugated in terms of singular or plural uh, to determine what the subject of the sentence is. So if you look at where are shoes, where are your shoes? Did you eat the cake? We understand that R is the verb of a sentence, and so therefore, shoe and and it's in plural form, therefore shoes is going to be in plural form, okay? And then eat would be the sub, uh, would be the verb of the sentence that comes before the cake, or cake is the uh, subject of the sentence. So eat is in singular form, cake is in singular form. People got tripped up, and sometimes I get tripped up too because um, when I look at this sentence, did you eat the cake? I want to use I want to use did as the verb of the sentence, and it's in, and, and it's in a past tense form. But it is not the verb of the sentence uh, for this um, sentence, just because it is preceding a subject. Eat and cake are, are connected in a sense, right? Because you are eating the cake. And so therefore the, the 
verb of the sentence is going to be eat, and then the cake is um, um, the subject of the sentence. So remember, what is performing the action? And then we have identifying the pattern. So uh, the man jogged, the man and his dog jogged. This sweet potato pie tastes and smells. A Mazda, a, Chry a Chrysler, and a Volkswagen were. One of my favorite stars uh, movies is Star Wars. There's that uh, verb subject um, type dynamic. And then the neighbors cut, weeded, mended. And then he and I ran and swam. And of course, understanding the subject of the sentence is the remake of Greece was. The Supreme Court makes the fourth Thursday in November is the fourth um, Jennifer and Cameron like. Several exchange students from Europe are. And then here are your jacket and hat. And we understand that jacket and hat is the subject of the sentence. Therefore, the verb is going to be plural, are, A-R-E. Okay? So then compound sentences method number one, that can be found on pages 47 to 40, uh, 47 to 53 in the course text. And we understand that compound sentence is defined as joining two or more simple sentences, which are independent clauses with a coordinating conjunction, a semicolon by itself, or a conjunctive adverb. Okay, uh, so we here's your pattern here, comma, comma, plus fanboys, right? And then uh, here's the uh, sample uh, table. So, and it's based upon Lynn likes to eat pickles. And then it, when we want to combine sentences, so the main sentence that would be connected to Lynn likes to eat pickles is, but she does, she does not like them on her hamburgers. So if we look at the contrast of the sentence, even though she likes pickles, she doesn't like them on a hamburger. That's looking at a contrast, right? So wherever you are placing the comma and the fanboy, it's the same place you're going to place the semicolon and then the conjunctive adverb. And however, in this sentence, for this context, works like but, and but works like however, okay? So you don't need to get creative. What you see, wherever you place that first comma in between the two independent clauses, that's where you are not going to um, correct the sentence, okay? And so then these are your patterns again, method number one, method number two, method number three. And then looking at some exercises, so when we want to use a coordinating word, uh, which is really called coordinating conjunction, these are your fanboys. And so um, we looked at sample sentences, and these are the ways that you can do that. So when we want to add a comma, we immediately need a fanboy. But if you didn't have a comma here, this would be considered a comma splice, which is the actual um, focus of this lecture, right? Adding a semicolon just by itself still makes the sentence um, grammatically correct. However, if we wanted to add a, con uh, a, a conjunctive adverb, we couldn't add a comma here and then conjunctive adverb and then another comma. We have to punctuate it um, grammatically. Okay, so these are your sample sentences that we went over in the previous lecture. Then semicolon by itself, understanding, uh, you can find this on pages 57 to 59. A compound sentence is um, is defined as joining two or more simple sentences again. When you want to add two simple sentences that are closely related, but you do not want to add a period, you can use a semicolon by itself. Essentially, anything on the right side of the semicolon just adds more value to what is on the left side. So uh, we're we're looking at a contrast here of two different people and two different types of animals. One is a dog and one is a cat. But it adds. But for the for the two sentences, if we are say we are at a park talking to another person who is a pet owner. Uh, Sophie is a Siamese cat. Samantha is a pit bull terrier. We would just have a normal conversation like that. So you wonder why would um, these sentences be placed together? It's just sometimes this is just as simple as one talking about their pet and another person talking about their pet and then combining them with a semicolon. So we look at um, methods. So your book is on the table. Your pencils are on the floor. If you did not um, add a semicolon here, uh, and you just left left the two sentences together, that would be a run-on sentence. So understand the difference, okay? So these are your sample sentences, and remember the key points. Two simple sentences running together creates a run-on. So Jane likes to eat. She likes to eat pickles. Those are two sentences, independent clauses running together. Then two, two simple sentences divided, connected, using a comma would be a comma splice. So Jane likes to eat. 
comma, she likes to eat pickles. That does not mean that the sentence is actually uh, grammatically correct. And then two simple sentences running together to be um, grammatical using a semicolon, a period, and a comma. Uh, I'm sorry, a semicolon, a period, a comma, plus fanboys, or a semicolon, conjunctive adverb, to, uh, plus comma to make it grammatical. That's a little confusing. Okay, so Jane likes to eat. We can end the first sentence and then begin the next sentence. Jane likes to eat, comma, fanboy. She likes to eat pickles. Then Jane likes to eat, semicolon by itself. She likes to eat pickles. And then Jane likes to eat. Uh, and, and in addition, work the same way in meaning for the particular context. So semicolon, conjunctive adverb, comma, and then you keep going. Okay. So then method number three is your semicolon plus conjunctive adverb plus comma. So you can find this discussion on pages 63 to 64. Compound sentence is defined as joining two or more simple sentences. Uh, let's recap for a minute. So method number one, that's your common fanboy. Method number two, semicolon by itself. And then method number three, uh, conjunctive adverb, I mean, semicolon conjunctive adverb plus comma. So you're looking at sample sentences. Understand that when you are inserting the conjunctive adverb, that should immediately tell you that you need a semicolon prior to it. It's very easy to um, uh, insert it without understanding the, the method. When you place, for example, at the beginning of the sentence, of course, you don't need a semicolon. You just need, for example, comma. So we have these sample sentences here that we all went over with the previous lecture. So now let's look at compound sentences correcting comma splices and run on. So I didn't use the term correcting for the previous uh, and really is is not only correcting, but revising uh, comma splices and run ons, right? Or proofreading as well, but we're gonna correct it here and use this terminology correcting. So you can find this discussion of comma splices and run-ons on pages 97 to 99 in the course text. Again, a compound sentence is defined as joining two or more simple sentences, independent clauses. When a compound sentence is not punctuated uh, grammatically, there are two standard sentence errors that happen. So that's a comma splice and a run-on. A comma splice happens when two independent clauses are separated by a comma. So here's your example. So Lola wanted to buy a new car, she started to save her money. So if we look at this as a comma in between two independent clauses, we see that this is uh, a comma splice, okay? So then a run-on happens when two independent clauses just run together, right? So the same sentence, Lola wanted to buy a new car. Uh, she started to... She started to save 10% of her weekly paycheck. So these are just two sentences that are running together. Now you could easily bring in so here and we understand that we need a comma prior to it, right? But here we're looking at a run on sentence. So let's look at revision methods again. So now we are moving from correction to revision for standard methods. That's uh, ending one sentence with a period and then beginning the next sentence with the capital letter. Insert insert a comma plus fanboys, insert a semicolon by itself, and then insert a semicolon plus conjunctive adverb plus comma. So these are your standard ways. So let's look at that sample sentence, uh, a sample comma splice, the bus stops suddenly, comma, I spill coffee all over my shirt. So listen to the very first sentence, simple sentence before the comma, and then listen to it afterwards. So let's, let me see it. So the bus stops suddenly. Does that sound like a complete sentence? Yes. I spilled my coffee all over my shirt. Does that sound like a complete sentence? So these are two sentences, simple sentences, that are, are sort of uh, uh, mimicking a combined sentence, but, but it is not punctuated correctly. So, the, so now that we understand that this is a, um, a comma splice, we have to correct it. So we have... Um, are four ways, right? The bus stopped suddenly. Uh, you can add uh, in that and then begin. I spilled my coffee all over my shirt. You can end it like that. Since we already have a comma there, we can just add a fanboy. So the bus stopped suddenly. Comma. 
and I spilled my coffee all over my shirt. Okay, and you can try any of the options for fanboys to see if it sounds right con contextually. Okay, so in the same area, the bus stopped suddenly. Semicolon, I spilled my coffee all over my shirt. So we understand then that the reason why, if we look at everything off to the right of the semicolon, we understand it sort of answers what happened or it gives us a reason for what happened on the left side of the semicolon. Okay, then the bus stops suddenly. Semicolon, because we already have a semicolon there. Um, in addition, comma, to, uh, in addition, uh, I spilled my coffee all over my shirt, okay? So we have uh, those four ways. Same thing with a run-on. Um, so we have a run-on here. The bus suddenly, uh, the bus stopped suddenly. I spilled my coffee all over my shirt. The reason why it's always hard to recognize a run-on is because sometimes we write the same way we talk. And so the very way that I just read that is the same way that we might say it to someone else. We may not pause after we said the word suddenly. And so if we really sort of just pause the way that we say words or say sentences, we can actually hear when we need to stop and when we need to start all over again. So uh, it's the same. it's the same dynamic here as you would see here, right, in terms of knowing where to place the the uh, the punctuation mark and it's going to be here okay but suppose i don't see uh suppose uh doesn't look like i can add anything here suppose the uh the sentence um began with she right say for instance we started the bus stopped suddenly she spilled spilled her coffee all over my shirt right so then we know that once we end one sentence we have to begin another with a capital letter letter all right so let's try that so the bus stops suddenly period capital letter she spilled her coffee all over my shirt period Okay, the bus stopped suddenly, um, comma, and she spilled her coffee all over my shirt. Okay, so that means we are we are suggesting that that the initial sentence still had it as a capital letter, right? Or yeah, the uh, the previous sentence here, right? So so. Uh, what if uh, it was a lowercase, I mean, a capital letter, then, um, so we started with this sentence here, the bus stopped suddenly, she spilled her coffee all over my shirt. And we wanted to combine these two sentences, right? So let's just do something with the fanboy. The bus stopped suddenly, and she spilled her coffee all over my shirt, okay? It depends on where you are placing not only the punctuation mark and what you do with the next sentence. So just going back, this is a run-on sentence, right? It says uh, sentence uh, sample number one, okay? And this is sentence sample number two, okay? And so we looked at adding a period, okay? And then adding a fanboy. So we have a period here. And then we have a fanboy here, a fanboy here, okay? And then if we are, are changing a sentence, say for instance, it began with the capital letter, then we would need to be sure that every part, unless it's a person's name, is going to be um, grammatically correct, okay? So then if we're still with the same sentence, the bus stopped suddenly, semicolon, 
then lowercase she or s and she she spilled call or her coffee all over my shirt okay so semicolon and then of course the the you would lowercase the s in that that she because it began as a sentence that was originally with a capital letter if if it was like that and then the last option the bus stopped suddenly semicolon because we already have a semicolon in addition she spilled her coffee all over my shirt okay so then of course that correcting correction is going to spill is going to include not only the semicolon the conjunctive adverb the comma plus that she that you see the s in the she this only works if if she is at the beginning of the sentence right if robin was at the beginning of the sentence of course we would not lowercase robin's name okay if that's a personal pronoun um personal noun rather okay so we have a period we have a fanboy we have a semicolon by itself and we have a conjunctive adverb okay so these are this is the lecture compound sentences comma splices run-ons uh, for how to correct them when you are confronted with them and the best way to know is just to kind of read the first independent clause by itself and then read the next one by itself all right thank you for listening